Oh, I don't know. And at 10 years old, it, it started. My goodness. It, so it's it's it. such a, a weird um, thing to go through at that, that age because I don't think I really understood. Mm. You've got tears streaming down me. I don't think you I really understood lovely. where I was at. Um, thank you. Um, and what was happening and it wasn't until mum and dad sort of sat me down and said look Jen this isn't you this isn't the bubbly girl that we know and that's what anorexia and many mental health illnesses do to young children um, you know in my instance it, it it strips away the person they once was and it makes them become a shell and maybe it was your way of having some control over the bullying that because you can't control bullying can you yeah. maybe it was your way in your mind of controlling the bullying that was happening I think to that's you. really really good of you to point out Fiona is that it's it's a mental health illness and for me I couldn't control what people were doing or saying to me but I could control some form of my life in some small way and then when that takes over, I don't think people realise the magnitude of, of the, the demon that is, mm. is there inside and the work that needs to be put forward to help people. And I think that's why mum and dad sort of decided to be fabulous and, and make a change, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, mum, you've yeah. been there clearly, obviously, clearly. throughout the whole... How many years mm. was it? It's 13, 13, at least. Yeah, at least. on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. You must have been destroyed at some point along the yeah. way because when your child is hurting you yeah. are doubly hurting aren't absolutely. you absolutely and i think as well it's a given that it has a profound psychological psychological effect on anybody who's part of the life yeah. and and i think for us i think it was the isolation and i think this is where there's so many people who come through the helpline who are carers who who are desperate they don't know where to go they don't know where to turn they don't know what an eating disorder is and you know we've been there yeah. and we've done that journey and i don't think anything can prepare you for the fact that you know your daughter might not make this and it must have had yeah. an effect on your mental health because as a parent yeah, whatever absolutely. happens to your child you do think is it something yeah. i've done don't you yeah, always definitely. i think i think the one thing that got us through was because you know, we've got a very very strong relationship and then is is amazing and he he supported me when, when I was down and I spotted him when, when he was down. Mm. And I think as well, we never ever argued about the eating disorder. We, we, you know, we worked together with it because it can split families apart. It can split yeah. relationships apart. Yeah, and it's, it's I horrendous. Think that's what people don't realise mm. really, like it's, yeah. even though I was going through it, I, I don't hold regrets because that's not the way I live my life anymore. I live for today and Well, you for didn't tomorrow. decide to do it, did you? Yeah, it no, it wasn't a choice. It, it happened, but I think that's one of my biggest heartbreaks is and probably why I get upset because of what I put my mum and dad and my oh, siblings oh. through. But I do the right thing now for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think what we want yeah. to try and say is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and the more that we're talking about it... Um, the more people will hopefully look at me and mum and, and our family unit and see that we went to hell and back. Yeah. But we did it and hopefully we can help other people by sharing.